So when Kobe was a rookie, he was 18 years old and the Lakers were playing against Utah. They're down three to one in the series. A couple guys were out of the game. The ball ends up in Kobe's hands. He shoots an air ball and then another and then another. And they end up losing the game. And, but the telling thing that really explains what will become the Mount Bamba mentality was he did after the game. Plane arrives in LA, everybody goes home and goes to sleep. He goes to the gym and he shoots for two hours all by himself. And that's what really made Kobe, Kobe. Paul, do you think the reason Kobe um, responded the way he did is because he knew that if he put in the work, eventually good things were gonna happen. And if you just keep doing the work and trust the process, good things will come and may they may not come in the short run, but they'll in the long run they will come your way. That's what got him to where he was at that moment, right? right. I mean, he was drafted out of high school, obviously had huge success, was a, a great player. So what got him there was just that, you know, taking the shots and putting them up. And, right. Realizing that it's a very mature approach, though, but realizing that sometimes they don't go in. Uh, yeah. But you got to keep doing what you do. You got to keep believing in who you are. And that's in the game, what, but what I actually mean is in practice. The fact that he went and shot those shots afterwards, that you just go back in the gym and same shoot. Same thing. Yeah, yeah same, same thing. Same thing. Same thing. You go back to basics. You go back to what your stitching is, what you right. know, right. Um, and what you had built to that moment. Right. right? And so that's what he did. And, I, and no surprise, he became this amazing sensation and then he created a cult following in Black Mamba mentality, right? Right. Yeah. And I think part of it is I think people don't have patience and they want that result immediately and they don't realize that it's the, it's the craft, right? You develop it over time and it gets better and better, but you have to keep putting the work and you have to trust that if you do the work, good things will come from it. You know, it's stay the course. Self-doubt can creep in though. I think, I think going back just to start shooting snapped Kobe out of it. Right. You know, because if you stay in that space, right, that mental space of, wow, failure. I shot, or, yeah, failure. I shot right. four air balls. I screwed up this sale call. I did this. I did that. Whatever it might be. Um, you know, if you stay in that space, uh, it can linger and seep into your inner being, right? So getting right out of it, going to shoot hoops right off the plane, got him to where he knows he lives, where he exists, right? Right, right, that right. sweet spot. Yeah, yeah, and there's just, there's a patience that has to be there. You got, this is why it's so important, because life is about the journey. Yes. yes. Right, not the destination. 100%. And to your point, we, want, we all want to fast forward to the destination. We all want to get there right now. Everybody wants that trophy they can yeah. raise and, above and, their heads. And many times you've seen it all over the place with people that have too much success too early yeah. It's the beginning of the end right. for them because they start to believe it's always like that, right. right? And they forget to how back to go to the basics and put the time and the effort and the work in. So it, it's uh, interesting you say that because at, at Kobe's retirement, the night he retired at the ceremony, he said something really interesting. He said, when you get up in the morning and do all that work, he goes, that is the dream. That's right. That is the dream. That's right. The journey is the dream. This is why it's so important to know that you love what you're doing, right? Right, And you're gonna know you love it if, the, if you dive inward and you have this underlying motivation. What's the under, what was the underlying motivation for Kobe? Maybe he's the only one that can answer that. Yeah. Maybe just to be the greatest player of all time. Right. Well, you're not gonna stop if you shoot four air balls, if right. that's the case, right? You got, you got a lot of shots to put up. To become the greatest. And yeah. The other thing about it at, at the very simplest level, again, enjoying the, the journey is, he just loved playing basketball. Yeah. Like I don't even think going to going to the gym at one o'clock in the morning that night and shooting for a couple hours was really work for him. He just loved playing basketball. So okay, I didn't have a good night. I'm gonna get back in the gym and I'm gonna shoot. And I enjoy shooting. It's what I love to do. It's almost like a uh, form of meditation. Yeah, I was just gonna him. say it's almost zen-like. Yeah, yeah, because you know I would do that. Uh, not to compare myself in the same sentence with Kobe, but. Uh, shoot, I would just love to go throw routes. I'd right. grab a receiver and we would just throw routes. Right. And we would do, you know, 10 out routes and then we'd move on to the next curl route. We'd run 10, we had to get 10 right. Uh, it was just, it was fun. I enjoyed doing, I, I enjoyed doing that more than going to the beach. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? And so Kobe, I believe, enjoyed 
same same idea. You know, right. enjoyed shooting hoops. He he loved it. He loved doing. It. This is why it's so important for everybody to realize, no matter what you're doing in life, make sure you love what you're doing. I mean, right. life's too short. Because yeah. if you love what you're doing, you're not working. Right. Yeah. You know, back to the term, trust the process. If you're going to trust the process. The process has to be something that you actually enjoy, yes. and if you don't enjoy that process, that means you, at the foundational level of whatever it is that you're doing, you're not going to be happy because you just don't enjoy going to do those things. And I think a lot of people get into it, especially sports and acting and things like that, they get into it for the wrong reasons. They don't get into it because they genuinely love the craft of playing. They just want that trophy. They want the accolades. They want the riches. They want those, the glory but they really don't want to get up at five o'clock in the morning and do that work because they don't really love the work. They just love the outcome of what the work might provide for them. That's why you need to respect your craft, right. respect you, right? right? Because you're, that's what, you're putting that out there. You're a unique individual, right. and this is what you're putting out there. So you've got to give it your best shot, 100%. right? So, but if you're not enjoying it, why are you doing it? Right, well, and you're then, gonna eventually mail it in when yeah, you don't enjoy exactly. it. Right. And, and yeah, and, then and that's back. why I left football. I, I left football because I wanted to play, and there was a point in time where you know you've got these windows to do it, and I realized that hey, now today if I could have been a backup, and make three million a year, uh, might have done it. Stuck a couple might've, more years. Might have stuck a couple more yeah. years. I'll mail this one in. But even that, <laughs> yeah. even that, you know, but you wouldn't just, have though. No. You wouldn't. Have, you would have got cut. Yeah, that's right. Because you would have right. been able to put that, that's the effort right. in because you were only half-heartedly pursuing it. Exactly, one hundred percent. Yeah, one hundred percent. And so, and so that's really, really important for everybody to realize right. that um, you spend so much time in a career, your vocation, what you want to do, and where you earn your keep. It shouldn't be about the money. It's pride in that craft. Yeah, it's that, pride in the craft. That that's thing it. that you that, left. But a school teacher, they don't. One hundred percent. Right. It's a great, great way. They to don't make. It. All no. that much financial gain every a, year that they teach. But a great teacher is, is like an artist. Yes. Yeah, it's just like just a thing of beauty Valued. watching a great teacher. Yes, valued beyond belief. And what gratification they get. They must get so much psychic income that it compensates for the fact that the lack of the money that they're making yeah. doing what they do and all the time they spend doing it, right? Because when you see kids develop and evolve and grow and all that sort of thing, much like a parent, I mean, it brings you such satisfaction, gratification. Yeah, there's nothing better. Yeah. There's nothing better. Yeah, but back to respect the craft. There's a great story I love. Um, I, I, I digress a little bit. Picasso one day was sitting in a co cafe, and a fan of his comes up to him and hands him a cocktail napkin and says, could you give me a little sketch? And Picasso obliged. He did a little sketch, and he hands him the cocktail napkin, and just as he's about, the guy's about to take it, he pulls it back. And he says, that'll be $100,000, please. <laughs> And the guy's like, what? $100,000, that just took you five minutes. And Picasso goes, didn't take me five minutes, it took me 40 years. Mm -hmm. So it's that gratification in that moment, it looks, you see that wonderful little sketch he just drew because he became so good at it, but he had 40 years of practice into becoming that good that, that you would want his sketch on the back of a cocktail napkin. And this is the issue with uh, time for value of money spent right and that's an example of that it's really the quality and what you doesn't matter if it takes 30 seconds right. um, it's the quality of what you're receiving is what right. you should be valuing right. and paying for not the fact that it only took you five minutes right yeah. because you're right he had the talent and skill to do it in five minutes because he spent 40 years in the making he was a master in the making but it didn't happen overnight yeah overnight 10 years in the making I love that that saying yeah. it's because people think you're an overnight success but Sometimes an overnight success, you don't see the work that was put in for many, many years. It's a years Gary Player statement. Uh, Gary Player walking down the fairway and somebody behind the ropes yells to him, Gary, I'd give anything to hit a golf ball like you can. He says, no, you wouldn't. <laughs> you, wouldn't you wouldn't wake up at 6 a.m. every morning, right. hit three buckets of balls, uh, have a cup of coffee, hit four more buckets of balls till your hand bleeds. Uh, and then go out and play 18 holes and have lunch. I mean, you you wouldn't do that because that's what right. it takes right. to be to, to get to any level of um, superiority. Not to even mention greatness, but just to be, you know, really good at whatever you're doing, whatever craft that is. Uh, it takes that sort of commitment to do it. And where does that commitment come from? We keep going back to this: the love. Right. 
the love. And where does that love come from? Diving inward. What do I really want to do with my life? What's really important to me? Yeah. I see that with a lot of parents. I have high school kids and I see, and I coached them when they were kids. I see a lot of parents who have this real desire for their kids to be great at a sport or whatever. And the kid's not really putting all the effort into it. And the, the parents are scratching their heads. Why won't they do it? And they just fail to realize that maybe it's the parent's dream and not the kid's dream. Right. Yeah, what well, happens all the time with parents, right? Parents that... I mean, we want the best for our kids, so it's not... That's of course we do. Right. Of course we do. And that's the number one thing parents need to do, is to recognize that it's not their life, it's their child's life, right? And to expose them to everything right. that they have an interest, see where their interests lie and see what they want to do, but not to really misguide them in any way, just to satisfy their own urges. Yeah. So I would say to parents that, you know, back to this idea of trust the process, I think people our, our age understand that kids maybe want that instant gratification because we live in a more of an instant gratification world. So parents understand that and they know that their kids have to put in the time. But as you're encouraging your kid to put in the time, you also have to encourage them to put in the time for something they love, right? That's, that's what trusting the process is, is doing what you love, not what somebody thinks you should love. Uh, yes, and that's the way it always should be. And so for every individual that walks the planet, that's the work that they need to do to understand that. And typically it's trial and error with most people. Right. That's typically how it happens. And you have parents that guide you in the process, right? And allow, allow you to experience. The hardest thing I think for me was the fact that my daughter, Stephanie, didn't want to play sports. Right. And she wanted to do dance. And I didn't have, I had one brother, I didn't know. Dance. 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 Yeah. Stephanie, don't you realize I was an all American quarterback? <laughs> you I mean, want to dance? Come on. Come on, Steph. You got sports jeans in You're your body. You're on the field. Let's go. <laughs> but I let her do it. I let yeah. her do it. And I loved it. Right.